Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial in which I'm going to show you how we're going to create this shampoo bottle in Shaper 3D. We will take a look at all the individual sketches which are needed to create this design and then build the bodies, detail them. We will also take a look at the design history, how we can adjust the modeling features of this design and then finish this presentation with a nice looking image of this shampoo bottle. And with all this set, let's get going. Let's start with a new and empty design. At the beginning, let's make sure that the snapping options are all turned on and our unit system is set to millimeters. The easiest sketch to start with is at the bottom. Let's go to top, sketch and ellipse. From the origin, we draw our distance of 35 millimeters and click with the mouse button. And then the width we set to 20 millimeters and click the mouse button. Very good. We can zoom out a little bit. This is now the base. For a loft body, we need to have a start and an end profile. The easiest way to create the end profile is by going to transform, selecting the move command, selecting the sketch, turning on copy, and then we move this up by 150 millimeters and click done. There we are. Beautiful. Okay. So now we have the start and end, but to create this nice organic looking shape, of this shampoo bottle, we need to have also side rails. The easiest one to start first are from the right view. So I go to the right view, zoom in a little bit. Then I go to sketch. I am going to select the spline tool with actually the control points. And you see when we create a sketch from this view, it cuts through the first two sketches and it creates the snapping, the plane to section points. So here I go over one cube and three down and then do the same at the bottom. Right click the mouse to exit that drawing command and then here too. Very good. Perfect. So now we have the left and right sketch. Now we have to do the same actually from the front view. Here, this is going to be a little bit more interesting because now there we can sculpt this a little bit. Create a new sketch and the same thing again. You see, we have all our snapping points. So I go to the same drawing tool, go down, click and click, and then I will do the same idea with three points down and one over right there and right click. Very good. Perfect. Very nice. Now to draw actually the exact curve on the left side, but it's rotated or flipped mirrored. The easiest way is actually to simply call the move and rotate command. So I do this, select this curve, turn on copy, rotate it 180 degrees, turn copy off. So I don't add another copy, move this over. And then this is really important. I move the widget to one endpoint, and then I can move this over till it snaps to the plane intersection. Beautiful. What we see, however, now is that this is a solid white endpoint and this one has a dot. This means this dot is not constrained to this endpoint. To do this, all I need to do, as you can see, is just click and drag it and then move it onto that endpoint. Perfect. Beautiful. So we can say that at this point, if we exit the sketch, we do have actually our uh, start and end profile and our rails. So now we have actually a complete curve network 
to create a loft body. We can, with the mouse, click and drag, select everything, and then select loft. There we are. Beautiful. The next step, since the basic body of the bottle is done, is to create the cap. I will select the top face of this body and then I go to extrude, extrude this up 30 millimeters. Then I will turn this into a new body by clicking on this um, icon here. And I would like to add a little bit of draft. So I click and drag this arrow here. Beautiful, that looks good. We can take a look in the, the right side. So how this is angled and then flows into the body, this looks fine. If I go to the front view, the left side is okay, but the right side I don't really like. Now what I can do, since we have a design history, is actually click on the sketch. And then I decide that this point has to move in a little bit. So I try to align this a little bit. So this is fine. Okay, because I moved this one in one point, I will do the same on the other sketch. Maybe these two points here I move in, and then let's do the same and move these two points in. Beautiful. Well, that's really good. Because in the history we have our first, second, third, and fourth sketch, and then the loft and the extrusion, whenever we modify a previous step, all the following steps are going to be updated. That's the beauty of parametric modeling. At this point, it makes sense to take a look at the cap and how we can continue designing it. I would like to have here at the front an opening that indicates where with my thumbnail I could flip this up. So to start, let's go to the right view. I zoom in a little bit, create a new sketch, use the spline tool and then start sketching out kind of like the shape of this opening. I close the sketch simply with a vertical line and exit it. Very good. Now what I will do is the following. I will extrude this out by 60, 50 millimeters, that is good. Turn this into a new body. And then move this body a little bit back. And you see how it perfectly intersects the side part, very nice. And then I will select the cap body, I will select this extrusion body and say subtract. I don't want actually the, the last body we created to remain, so we can keep the originals to none. Click done and there we are. Now look at this, that's beautiful. Cool, very nice. So now we can go in and start thinking about styling this a little bit. So these are three millimeters by the grid. This point is a little bit um, more than three millimeters. We can actually go and modify these elements. So this maybe I bring over a little bit, this, I can bring to here, this I can drag down, and you see how with these commands, how I am actually styling the opening by simply adjusting that sketch. It also really makes sense when we have a lot of objects to sort them. You, you saw I selected multiple sketches and then dragged this onto the last sketch that created a new folder, right click rename, and I call this simply sketches. This way I can turn all the sketches on and off. 
I will have at one point more sketches than bodies, so that's an easy way to hide them quickly. Now it's actually time to think about where that separation between the cap and the lid of the cap would be. I will select the top face, which is flat, because from that one I can create a new plane and move this plane down by 10 millimeters. And I move around and visualize, does this actually look good? 10 looks actually too deep. 6 to 7, 7 looks actually proportionally well. Okay, beautiful. So, this plane will be used as a cutting tool. When I double click the cap body and then shift click the construction plane, the split body command becomes active. I can split it, click done, and there we are. And this construction plane I put into the sketch folder. There we are. Really nice. So you see actually that I, in a very uh, methodologically way, approach how to design these individual um, bodies. Step by step, I'm starting adding elements to it. For example, fillets, which are final finish details that we are going to do at the end. When I'm holding this bottle from the right side, my fingers go around the left side. And maybe I, I would like to have a little bit of an interesting cut detail at the bottom, at an angle. I'm going to show you how we can do this now. So I will turn on all my sketches. I see here sketch one, that one is perfect. I will select it, exit the sketch, then the sketch is um, activated. I click copy so I can make a copy and move this up. I turn the copy function off, go to the front view, and then I will rotate this a little bit. There we are. Very good. Now I will go into edit mode and or click on this uh, sketch that actually then, as you can see, switches into editing the sketch and I will draw here a line. This line is meant to be as a guide. You will see that in a moment. Escape, escape, select this line. We can make this a construction type. So you see that this is really purely for visualization purpose. This is a tick too narrow. So I'm going to make this wider. 30 millimeters and this we will set to 40 millimeters. So you see now we have a nice kind of like an offset around it. Perfect. Okay. Exit the sketch. I will select this sketch profile one more time. Exit and then we will add a plane perpendicular to curve. That is the default function when this sketch element is selected. There we are. I will prefer bringing this down roughly to here. This is very good. And then on this construction plane, I will select it. I will add a new sketch. I will simply use a circle. And the diameter of the circle should be 20 millimeters. We can, for a moment, measure how wide this circle actually intersects with the body. So 16 millimeters. That's good. My finger actually will nicely fit into that groove. Exit the sketch, select the profile of the sketch, then select the ellipse and we can do a sweep command. There we are. In this case now I see that the initial ellipse I created is way too small. Okay, so let's make this bigger, 40. 
this is maybe too big, 35. You see how nicely everything is being updated. 45, there we are. Okay, so now this um, body does not intersect with my bottle anymore, but I can now move this around left and right, up and down, but up and down at an angle. And that's the reason why I drew this line. Check this out. I move the widget for the 3D command onto this line. You see how this rotated? Now I can move this up a little bit and to the left a little bit. And it asymmetrically is going to intersect with that body. Perfect. Select the bottle body, select this donut, and then we do a subtract. Also here, I don't want the originals. There we are. Look at this. This looks really beautiful. It's really nice. So what I what I can do now essentially is if I go to the history, you can see where the move command is. So if I click on this, I can move this around. And you see that this actually does reposition everything. Now it's a little bit difficult to see what we're really doing because the Boolean command is on the fly being calculated. So right click and say suppress. Then you see now the original body. So when I move this around, now you see what is what is happening. And then right click and say unsuppress, then this Boolean cut is automatically happening again. If I click on this triangle, you can also see here is the target. That is my body, the tool, that's the donut. And then we do a cut. And for example, I do not want to have the tool or I want to have the tool. So all these functions can be turned on and off afterwards. Beautiful. Really nice. Let's um, do a little bit of housekeeping. We turn all this off. This actually looks pretty nice. We can now think about final finishing touches. Since we worked on this part, we can do this, or you can think about from the bottom to the top, I start filleting everything. Filleting is a very time consuming, computationally expensive task. So I always suggest doing this at the end. And also try to do this in a more logical, structured way. So in this case, I will say the bottom, I will fill it first. Very good. Then this one. Here now, these two are in my way. I need to figure out which one is which one. So very good. There, this will be one millimeter. Very nice. Then I can turn this off, show these two, go to the front view. Then I will select these two edges first. Fillet this a little bit. Then with the mouse, I will click and drag, press the tab key or E till I have those edges selected. 0.25, just a tiny rounding. So when we go into the viso, we see that there is a separation between two different bodies. Go to here, two millimeters. Very good. We can, for example, see here now that this is a very, very tight. So we could go to the sketch and then select these sketch elements and move them down. There you see now that this is a bigger distance. This is how beautiful parametric modeling is. You start everything at the beginning and then later you refine everything. Design is an explorative process. Also, I primarily used in each fillet command actually the G1 function, which is automatically. So this, if I click on this uh, face, you will see this is the command which is being used to create this. If I go to here, 
there I see that this is just g1. If I go to g2, then this is a nicer rounded design. There we can see that with g2, it's a nicer flow from the top to this face. And the same we can also do, for example, down here. So this, what fillet is that? There we have that fillet and there. This is a very small fillet, but also here we can do this. So these are more like aesthetical perfections of a design. The other edges that can be more mechanical. Maybe this one here we do G2 too, because the others are more for a visual look or breaking really sharp edges. Very good, nice. So with this design, we are at this point now ready to add actually materials and create a nice visualization. So I click on modeling and then I go to visualization. And there we are. First thing, what will be good is to define what type of environment I would like to be in. I will scroll down here to gradient mood. There we are. And then I click on the cog icon. I can rotate the slide and specify that this should be kind of like a, a nice bluish bright background. We do have our individual bodies here. To assign a no material, I can click on a face and you see these highlights individual faces. I can also click on a body or I can drag a material onto an object. And you see how this works. It's very intuitive. And I will do the same with the bottom there. There we are. Perfect. Now, to adjust the materials, I don't have to click a face. If I do this, I, I will get the ability to change the color of this face, which will create a new material. What I only have to do is look, this is the silicon material, so it should be more rubberized material for the bottle to be less slippery and the melamine and more like uh, glossy material for the top. All I have to do is just click on the material there and then we can adjust this very nicely. Click uh, somewhere else. And then here is the melamine. Go with the nice cyan color, adjust this a little bit, zoom in, click somewhere else so nothing is selected. Beautiful. And this is how easy then it is to create individual views for such a product. And then to capture it, you can just click on the capture button. And this basically sums up everything in how to design such a shampoo bottle with Shaper 3D and then create a nice looking product presentation. I hope this was very informative. Have a good day. Bye bye.